Hello and welcome to today's lesson where we're looking at what is strategy and how to tell if you have a good one. Now, if you're working in a professional environment, you may hear the word strategy a lot, but what exactly is strategy? Well, before we dig into what strategy is, let's take a look at what strategy isn't. Now, you may have come across the following strategies before. Our strategy is to sell directly to consumers, our strategy is to be number one in EMEA. Our strategy is to grow through acquisition. Our strategy is to pursue global expansion. Our strategy is to be the lowest cost provider. So what exactly do these strategies have in common? Well, for a start, none of them, none of them are strategies. Instead, they are components of a strategy. Or in some cases, they're simply goals, targets to hit, but what they aren't is strategies. So if we now know what strategy isn't, then what is strategy? A simple way to understand strategy is to examine the origin of the word strategy. It derives from the Greek word strategos, which means the general's art. So if strategy is the general's art, what does a general do? Well, the answer to that is that they coordinate the whole with the aim of winning the war. And that's the essence of strategy, to coordinate the whole to achieve some goal. Now, the general has the goal of defeating the enemy, but it's strategy they use to achieve this goal. Now, the general might decide to engage in some battles and retreat from others. Uh, they will sometimes faint areas of strength. They will try to play to their strengths. They may even sacrifice teams to achieve their objectives in other areas. What they probably won't do is launch towards the enemy on all fronts at the same time. So before we proceed, it's important to understand the difference between strategy and tactics. Now, a simple way to understand the difference between the two is through this quote from Peter Drucker. Management is doing things right, whereas leadership is doing the right things. Now you can think of management as being about tactics and leadership as being about strategy. Now turning again to our general, they are the leader, they coordinate the whole or the strategy, they're trying to do the right things and contrast that to the commander on the battlefield. Now they're more like the manager executing what the general has told them to do. They choose how best to coordinate their men or the tactics to achieve what the general has asked them to do. So let's examine how strategy fits within an organization. This will help further deepen our understanding of strategy. When people think about strategy curation, they often think of the many tools available to help support this activity. Tools such as a pest analysis, SWOT analysis, and competitive analysis. Now, these tools support strategy creation, but they're not strategy either. And the diagram you see here should make this clear. Now, from the diagram, we can see that there are two major inputs to strategy creation. So the first is mission, and this is our big goal and our values. Now, in the general's case, their mission is obviously to defeat the enemy. But their values might be to obey the Geneva Convention and to treat every individual with the same respect. Now, the second input to strategy creation is the strategic analysis. And this is the information you gather that helps you form a better strategy. Now, this might include performing things like anal analyzing your strengths and weaknesses, analyzing the environment, and analyzing competitors amongst a bunch of other things. But once you have those two inputs, then it's time to create our strategy. Now, we'll deal with this a little bit later, but for now, let's look at the outputs from strategy. Now that's going to include, amongst other things, the organization structure. So that means setting up the organization so it can execute the strategy. It's going to include people, what people should we employ? So for example, should we focus on hiring great designers? 
Or should we focus on hiring great customer service people, for example? It's going to focus on the processes, so what processes need to be in place to support the strategy. And likewise, what rewards do we need? How should we align rewards with the objectives of the strategy? So in essence, the organizational setup is all about the practical details of the organization and how it should be set up as a direct consequence of the strategy. So we just looked at what the inputs to strategy are and what the outputs from strategy creation are. But how do we create a strategy? Well, to curate or to have a strategy, you must be able to answer the following five questions. Now, if we can answer these questions, then we know we have a complete strategy. But what's more, if each of our answers reinforces the others, then we may just have a great strategy. So let's examine each of the questions in turn. So first, what arenas will we compete in? Well, the answer to, the, to answer this question, we need to get specific about the market we're chasing. So what country or region are we going after? What sales channels will we use? What product categories will we focus on? How will we configure our value chain? These are just some of the questions we need to answer. The next question is what vehicles will we use to get there? Now, we know the arena in which we want to compete, but now we need to choose a vehicle to get us to the arena. Now, this could be to build it ourselves, it could be to license it, or it could be via a partnership. Question three, how will we differentiate ourselves to win? Now, many people assume strategy is about competing to be the best. It isn't. It's about competing to be unique. Now, here we need to define how we differentiate ourselves. Will we have a better design, for example, or maybe we'll have a higher quality product, or perhaps a cheaper product, or a more reliable product. Whatever it is, we have to work really hard to make ourselves be unique so we can win in the marketplace. Question four, how fast will we move and using what sequence? Now, the speed of movement in business is important. Move too fast and you could end up getting ahead of yourself, growing too quickly and going out of business. Move too slowly and the competition could get there first. Now, related to this is understanding the sequence of moves that you will take. So for example, your arena might be opening stores across China, but to avoid getting ahead of yourself, you launch just one store in Beijing first, taking plenty of time to get the operational kinks ironed out. And once that's done, then you expand as fast as you can. And the final question is, how will we make a profit? Now, this question determines if you're making a profit based on two factors, and that's basically whether you're a low cost or a high cost provider. Now, there's no right or wrong answer here. Large profits are achievable with either approach. So just as an example, Apple, obviously they're a high cost product and that's how they make their profit and that's underpinned by a unique selling point of great design. And conversely, IKEA, they make profit based on low cost, but that's underpinned by replication efficiencies because they create so much stuff. Okay, so let's take a look at an example and look at the strategy of BMW. And in the diagram here, you can kind of see in a nutshell the BMW strategy. Now, if BMW were to launch in a new country, would it make sense to partner with an existing dealer or an existing dealer network in that country? And what you will see as we go through this example is that BMW's strategy tells them not only what to do, but also what not to do. Now, let's take a look at the diagram. Now, BMW's arena is obviously global professionals. Their value chain is set up to emphasize the active driving design philosophy. Now, the vehicle they use to reach their market is their dealer network. 
um, and their differentiators are that they're high quality, unique design and high performance. Their steps or sequence of moves they make are to increase the range of cars in established countries and in new territories they establish dealerships in the capital and take it from there. Finally, their economic logic is based around charging a premium price. Now, the real power of BMW's strategy is where the answer to one question reinforces another. So, for example, by controlling the dealership experience, they can ensure a high quality sales experience. And that obviously aligns with the premium quality of their product. Now, there's also alignment between high performance and professionals. And finally, one last example, there's also alignment between professionals and a premium price. Now, if BMW were to partner with an existing dealer to supply their cars, then they wouldn't have the same level of control over the sales experience. So as you can see, BMW wouldn't do this. So the strategy doesn't only tell us what to do, it tells us what not to do. You know, it means that BMW doesn't make trucks. BMW doesn't partner with others to work on its styling. It doesn't make a single budget car. Their lower range cars are all at a premium price compared to competitors too. So by telling us what not to do, a good strategy helps us make trade-offs and make prioritizations. So to summarize or conclude, by now you should be able to answer the question, what is strategy that we posed at the beginning of this video? Now, articulating what is strategy can seem really esoteric at first, and it's a term that's thrown around a lot, but at its core, strategy is about controlling the whole to achieve some goal. Strategy tells us what to do, as well as what not to do, and it is important to set a strategy as otherwise your moves are without aim. And as you execute your strategy, your strategy will be tested every day. So without a clear strategy, it's going to be super easy to get distracted and go off course. So that's it. Really hope you enjoyed this video and I look forward to speaking to you again soon.